The 1949 Los Angeles Crusade was to launch Billy Graham to worldwide fame, but the meetings appeared to get off to a slow start. Arriving in Los Angeles before the crusade, Mr. Graham gave a news conference. The next day, his team searched the newspapers eagerly to see how the crusade would be publicized. Not a single paper carried the story. But among the supporters Graham did have was the influential Presbyterian Bible teacher, Henrietta Mears, who invited Billy to her home in Beverly Hills to speak to a group of Hollywood personalities. Present that day was the hard-drinking star of cowboy westerns, a man named Stuart Hamblin, who also was the host of one of the most popular afternoon radio shows on the West Coast. He was infamous for his gambling and brawling. The two men took a liking to each other, and Billy longed to win Stuart to Christ. But as the three-week campaign neared its end, there was no sign that the big cowboy was under any conviction. The local crusade organizers, sensing momentum for the meetings was building, wanted to extend them, but Billy was hesitant, having never done that before. He asked God for a sign. And the next morning at 4.30 a.m., Billy was awakened in his room at the Langham Hotel by a phone call. It was Stuart Hamblin wanting to drive down to the hotel with his wife, Susie, to talk with Billy. That night, Stuart gave his heart to the Lord Jesus. And for Billy, that was the sign he had asked for about the extending of the meetings. Meanwhile, Stuart excitedly told the story of his conversion on his radio show, and local newspapers picked it up. Soon, all Los Angeles was buzzing about the Graham meetings. The resulting publicity launched a half-century of mass evangelism unparalleled in American Christian history. Shortly afterward, Stewart met movie star John Wayne. I wrote the song one night shortly after midnight, and believe it or not, the song in its entirety, lyrics and music, was written in the short space of only 17 minutes. It came about this way. I'd been visiting a neighbor of ours, a man who at that time was one of Hollywood's most famous actors, and he'd just returned from making a picture, and I'd gone over to his home just to kind of fill him in on what had happened in his absence. There were a lot of other people there, too, and somehow the discussion got around to how people could solve problems within themselves. And I remember making a statement about it's no secret what God can do in a man's life. About two hours later, I started to leave and was just walking out the door when this man made a remark that I'll never forget. He said... Stuart, you ought to write a song about it. it is no secret what God can do. Man, that's a beautiful thought. Stuart went home that evening and sitting at his piano wrote, It is no secret what God can do. He went on to write 225 other songs before his death in 1989. So what is the moral to this great story? I think it may be found in Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church forever and ever. Amen. Sometimes